In this video, I'm going to show you how I work on uh, an animation called Horus Hippo in Egypt. And allegedly it was made in 1928. So I'm drawing in a rubber hose style. And it's part of a graphic novel, which is called Horus Hippo Returns. Actually, the World of What If Horus Hippo Returns, which will be the first part of a, a bigger graphic novel. But I started out uh, doing this story in 1996 and I've made this book uh, Kwap van het Witte Doek and that's um, also now available because I'm redrawing everything uh, on Apple Books and it's called Horus Hippo of the Silver Screen and you can uh, download it for free on Apple Books and I'll leave a link below this video. At that same time, I also made this poster. It's a, a silk screen and it's called Quap in Egypto. And Quap is Horus Hippo in English. So this is a, a poster I did in the style of the late 1920s. And now finally, after 23 years or even longer, uh, I'm making this animation just little excerpts of the animation because the animation is going to be part of the graphic novel i'm working on so it's going to be a comic but also um, a flip book so the animation i'm now making will end up in the graphic novel and in this video i'm just going to show you you know how long it takes to make an animation frame by frame and I'm doing everything in Toon Squid. I'm now inking one frame of the animation of Horus Hippo in Egypt. And I'm now inking Horus Hippo. And I'm using the vector brushes and I'm using thick and thin lines. So this is all recorded in real time so it's a good example on how long it takes to do an animation with frame by frame animation so each frame is drawn i first did a rough sketch of the animation then i did a cleanup and now i'm inking the cleanups with the vector brushes I got interested in doing animation when I was around 10 years old. And in that time period, or at that time, we had no computers or internet. So the first animations I studied were 16 millimeter uh, movies. And I had a movie of the soup scene of uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And I also had a moviola and I studied each frame and then I made some uh, animations on paper and I had a very crude light table I was working on and then I would copy the animation of uh, the soup scene of the, the seven dwarfs And I did everything uh, on paper. Then I would record it frame by frame with an 8mm camera. And when that was finished, you would send it out to Kodak. And it would take around two to three weeks if the movie was developed. And hand-drawn animation had always have my interest because you can bring your drawings to life. And when I got the developed movie and, you know, watched it on my movie projector, it was pure magic. And it took some time that I uh, 
picked up animation again it was around 1999 when I bought Macromedia Flash and then I did some animations also of Horace Hippo because I had published some books of Horace Hippo which is called Quab in in the Netherlands or in Dutch and I did some frame by frame animation but most of the time I used symbols and uh, also animated clips and that's a lot different than you know drawing each frame a new drawing so now with Toon Squid which I'm now working in I'm finally picking up 2D animation again and this animation will end up in the book Wars Hippo Returns it's going to be a graphic novel and this animation will also be included into the story because it is a story about uh, a long lost cartoon star from the Dutch cinema and as the story goes Oris Hippo was designed by my grandfather Marinus Hollanders and he had a studio in Haarlem which was called Taken Film Fabriek Hollandia and Taken Film Fabriek Hollandia translates into Cartoon Factory Hollandia. It's a made-up story, but it's also part of a bigger story, which is called The World of What If. And in order to create that story, I also had to create a backstory. And you can find the backstory in a free ebook, which is the first chapter of Horus Hippo Returns. And that's called Horus Hippo of the Silver Screen. And it's now available on Apple Books. I'll leave a link below this video so that you can download the ebook. And I'm now inking Harlow Hippo. And in this story of Horus Hippo in Egypt, she is a mummy and Horus Hippo will save her and I've made another animation that they're running away from the crook and I will leave a link uh, to that video I've made a little short out of it and I'm using these factor brushes to you know ink everything with thick and thin lines because back in the day they would ink everything on cells and this is a little bit similar uh, when you ink on real cells they're quite slippery same as as the iPad I always ink in parts and all the shapes are round so there are almost no straight shapes also, the white gloves are very apparent of that era of the rubber hose animation. And this is the second version of Oris Hippo, because I also have drawn him uh, in an old style with uh, a white face and a black head, more similar to Mickey Mouse. But in this story, he had to change because uh, the characters needed to be whitened up. It's nice that you can really zoom in into your drawings while you're inking. And all of the shapes need to be closed. Because later on I will uh, do the paints or the, the colors of the character and for that I'm using the bucket tool and I've showed in another video on how you can uh, use 
different layers within a keyframe so that you ink something on the, the top layer and that you use that top layer with the inks as a reference and then underneath that you can do the coloring first i did everything on one layer and then i got some strange artifacts in toon squid that the lines would get a little bit thicker so i'm now separating uh, the inks from the colors So it's a quite tedious process of inking everything and the great thing about ToonSquid and other software is that you can instantly see uh, what your animation is doing and especially with inking the line width needs to be the same in each frame otherwise it would flicker and I'm animating this on 12 frames per second so when you run it at 24 frames per second it will be an animation that's animated on twos so if you animate on twos you draw one image for every two frames which means you need 12 drawings for one second of animation at 24 frames per second But in order to save time, and uh, also this is going to be a, a flipbook in uh, the graphic novel, so I don't need each frame. So that's why I'm animating this on 12 frames per second or on twos. I'm now inking the, the camel that's jumping up. I'm animating his feet on a separate layer, so I'm going to reuse these feet for all the frames that will follow, and then you can duplicate it. And later can, you can merge down these layers. Great thing about using this technique is that you can, you know, fully ink uh, some objects. Or uh, here I'm uh, inking the the feet of the camel. You can then erase the feet that are going behind the front feet. So in this way, you can use ToonSquid to your advantage. And this is really a, a rubber hose animation. And I'm inking over the lines of the body of the camel because later on they will be colored with black ink. So it really doesn't matter, you know, if they're a little bit overlapping.
and making animations of your character is also a very good practice if you're uh, doing a comic or you know want to learn a character if you're doing animation of the character you have to you know draw him from each angle so that's a, a great practice if you want to do comics then 2d animation is is very helpful in order to learn more you have to make a lot of mistakes and from your mistakes you will learn and also the reins of the camel i did on a separate layer so that i can erase the legs that go behind the reins But when you're working with a lot of different layers, you always have to be on the right layer if you want to ink on it or if you want to erase a part. And when I finished with the whole inking process, I will merge down all of the layers. And for this running cycle, I also had to design a background, uh, a panorama background of the desert. And I'm doing this in Procreate uh, using my watercolor brushes and I've made a special set to do the watercolors in the style of the old Disney movies from the 1920s, 1930s. And I'm using two different brushes and these brushes are available on my Gumroad and I'll also leave a, a link below this video. They're great for doing uh, watercolors, but also painting these backgrounds. And I'm doing everything in black and white because this short, this Horace Hippo short is in black and white. It was originally made in 1928. But that's all fictional. And with watercolors, you know, you have to build up your colors. So you're going from light to dark. I've created a brush that has a lot of dilution, a lot of water to it. So when you paint with it, um, you can slowly build up your colors and your tones. So this is the final animation in Toon Squid. So when Horace Hippo and Harlow Hippo fall down on, on the camel, that's all animated on twos. And I've also imported the, the background. So this is all animated on twos and here starts the run cycle of of the camel just going to the library and here you see all the different elements i've made symbols out of them 
So the background and the foreground of a cliff that's in front. And here is the uh, run cycle. So the characters are on a separate layer. And also the, uh, the camel. And for each frame, it's separated into the colors and the inks. And the inks I set to fill reference so that you can color underneath. I also made a separate layer with the shadow and that is set to multiply so that the shadow will be a little bit transparent. So this is the scene. And I also use the camera. And this is the end scene of um, the animation. And here you can see the circle and it's just a symbol that I close in. And for the last part, I just animated it with single frames. So this is the final animation. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to hit that notification bell. Because each time I upload a new video, you get a notification. Drawing is fun and practice makes perfect. See you next time. Doodles. If you want to see more tutorials on working in ToonSquid, I've made a playlist. Just tap on the playlist and you can see all of the tutorials about ToonSquid.